we've been discussing the corridor uh, and basically what we've understood that to mean is that it is um, a period of time when you go through the sufferings of Christ um, and um, it involves um, um, evildoers or an evildoer but usually it's bigger than one um, and uh, or two it's it's usually a huge thing and um, that uh, we just named it the corridor to us it would just be us tootling along doing our Christian thing and all of a sudden all this really insane stuff starts happening and we don't know why it's happening or maybe we're in tune with the Lord and we immediately or shortly therewith um, <clears throat> recognize what's going on. Uh, I will say that in my opinion, First Peter, uh, that Peter um, does, does divide this up into these categories. And, um, but again, for us it's not categories, but in seeing it in First Peter, I've seen that over and over and over. It, it was what we called early on the pattern. <clears throat> and it's what you see over and over and over of the way that um, Peter describes the same thing. Um, and, uh, and then he threw out the book because he's repeating. Uh, he will use different examples. So to us, it doesn't sound the same when you're reading the book of First Peter. You say, oh, he's talking about this. Now he's changed subjects, and he didn't change subjects. And um, so part of what we're doing is just trying to get truly familiar with um, this, this uh, concept that, that Peter has. And with that, I just want to remind you that, you know, pretty much uh, reading, for, reading Peter's writings with Paul's mind, you're not going to understand it. And if you uh, continue to apply the things that Paul, the way that Paul teaches, and, and, and particularly his definitions of certain words, Peter will take those same words, but he'll have a, his own definition. And, and um, probably shortly here, uh, we, will, we will start really going through those definitions even, and even harder so we can see that. And the Lord's given me a bit of a plan to be able to help us to, uh, to sense that and see that and feel that in the Lord. So y'all be in prayer. Be in prayer for me, but be in prayer for us. And, and that the Holy Spirit would be able to grant um, a seeing that we have to have or we're really not going to, to understand First Peter. Um, so, we've, uh, I see, I, this thing's in my way, so I can't see where I'm at on the board, but I'm going to just point over here. <clears throat> and um, you know that we've, um, uh, we talked about the girl and the guy. It's not necessarily a guy-girl thing or whatever, but uh, see, it's, it's actually better if I stand over here, and that way I can point it out. Okay, sorry, we're, we're, continually working up new ways of helping, trying to help you be able to get this. But this is, we've, we've sort of discussed this, but I want to go through the individual parts of the quarter today. And uh, we talked quite a bit about this beginning part, but really that beginning part actually starts happening as you step into the quarter or as you are first aware that there's some wild things going on or some bad things going on pertaining to you and you want to, um, uh, you, you need to begin the process there at that point, stepping into it. And then, of course, we've got the three, what we call the three quarters or the three parts of the corridor. And so the first one, again, because we spent so much time on it last time, uh, and before, uh, but it's so important because the rest of it depends on how you uh, perceive what's going on and how much you know 
of this reality uh, as opposed to uh, it just this not being anything except it's just a trial or it's just the devil or it's just a mean person or it's just a you know bad luck or whatever whatever you want to call it okay so um, we're going to talk about part one here this little blue box and um, so in part one the trial has begun okay the trial has begun all right and uh, part one we talked about this uh, and that it will be discerned in one of two ways so we talked about this last time but I have to repeat it because I'm going to give you two new options that we haven't talked about okay so <clears throat> it's discerned in one of two ways uh, as an attack or as the sufferings of Christ okay uh, part one is handled in one of two ways, as depicted by the chart that we've used with the girl and the guy. Um, the girl's response, she knows what it's about and passes through the whole thing with the Lord. Now, that's great, but usually that doesn't happen your first or second time around or several. <clears throat> um, and then with the guy, the guy's response, he misses the point and reacts back against the evildoer becoming one himself okay meaning railing for railing accusation for accusation all of this just getting into it's like you know I am not gonna stand by and let them you know say that or do that or whatever when they're worse than I am as if them being worse than you means that that uh, you should stand up for your rights Jesus they were all worse than him and he still bore that all right so um uh so now i want to talk about the two options the two other options once you enter into the blue box once you enter to part one of the corridor and that is that and and so we're now we're referring only to the guy because the girl, remember, at the beginning, knew what it was, and she just passed through it, and she was with the Lord. Okay. The guy, we need to discuss several things, ways that he could handle this. All right. Number one, he initially sees it as an attack. And now, remember, the, when I first showed you these two, I just said he just sees it as attack, period, and misses the point. But this is different. He initially sees it as an attack, but eventually catches on. In other words, you know, he's in it. He's, he's in the, the box here. He's going through the process. But all of a sudden, he begins to realize this is not just that. This is not just, a, a, you know, an enemy or an attack or a trial that we're going through or something like that. This is the sufferings of Christ. So he initially sees it as an attack, but he eventually catches on. As such, he, like the girl, passes through the rest of it in the Lord all right so now uh, the second option is and this second option uh, uh, now remember we're only going to be talking about this part one here in the blue box we're not talking about having gotten to the red box yet so the second option is he realizes it that it is the sufferings of Christ. He gets into the trial, but then he starts having doubts and he starts having fears and eventually gives in to the pressure. So we need to understand that this, this that the sufferings of Christ that Jesus went through, if you use that as an example, if you, if you understand all the trial and all of the I mean, you know, most people are just, you know, they are aware of what he experienced on the cross. They're not a, a aware of how it, it looks to his friends or to his family or to his disciples and how it looks to the general public and, and what they do to him and all of the things that go along with that. And that they, they lie about what he did and everything that he would never do, they say he did and stuff like that. So he's a deceiver. Others said he had the demon, that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, so imagine just a little bit of that. And so you get in the middle of that, and um, 
there's a there's a struggle. Well, the the topic now is going to be this struggle and failure, or struggle and or the failure. So the struggle starts happening because the evil doer is 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 out to destroy you, or the evil doers. Um, they are attacking your reputation. They're attacking your you know your family. They're attacking your ministry. They're attacking your character. They're attacking, you know, all of this stuff and coming against you like they did Jesus when he was the son of God. And um, so that's why I said the struggle and or the failure. So the struggle is you struggle with the severity of the sufferings that, that it's just hard. You struggle with the severity of the sufferings. You struggle with the damage to your reputation and ministry. Because, you know, all these things are going off in your head like, this isn't right. This isn't fair. This is wrong. They're, they're you know, they're, I know stuff about them that they've done that's way worse than anything I've done. But... That's not where you're at in this. See, you, you may that may be true, and Jesus knows way more stuff about every person that did anything to him during the trial and the crucifixion. Um, but you know that wasn't at all, you know. And uh, it's even harder when you actually know that you have ammunition against them that you could use. Um, Jesus had 10,000 angels. You might have some information that would, you know, make them look worse than you, which is not the nature of the Lord, and it's not what he's wanting at all out of you. Um, so um, there is that uh, damage to reputation in ministry. There's the injustice of the charges, um, they're they're just wrong. They're not just. They're not fair. They're not you know. Um, they don't get it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. They don't. They just are able to. The evil doers are just able to get away with murder, if you will, unabated because you won't justify yourself. You won't become an evil doer yourself. You refuse that. You want to be with the Lamb and you want to be with Him in His sufferings knowing that you're feeling the same things that He feels. Uh, I wish I had it before me now, but I, I do have it somewhere in these notes of uh, a scripture in Psalms that says when we suffered, he, he was there. When we were afflicted, He also was afflicted with us. Same thing, except in reverse. Now, the attack is really on Jesus, but we're, but that's not what they're saying. They're saying the attack is on you because you, you know, well, you did this thing and blow it way out of proportion, all this kind of stuff. So um, loss of friends uh, and loss of respect. And so people start believing it and they start going with it. And, you know, if you know anything about a mob mentality, it starts getting out of hand. And uh, just like it did at Jesus's trial. And um, so um, they get so many people that are either distorted in their thing or maybe there have been people that were jealous. And so they side with this person. And then, then it just looks like the whole world is against you. And they don't want to step in there on your side. And besides, they'll hear something that they think, well, you know, that's true about them. Um, loss of friends. And this is, this is honestly, this is where you find out who your true friends are. A friend loveth at all times. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. So you find out, well, so-and-so, I thought they were my best friend, and they're not really at all. They, they easily fell to this thing. Um, you can just go down the line. 
But there are those that the Lord has given you. There are those that are of God and may be ones that you wouldn't even have thought would have stood with you, but they will. But the trial will, trial will be so much that you will think, at least in your mind, that nobody is standing with me. Um, uh, the shame, the ridicule, the judgments, okay? So the shame of even going out in public because it feels like the whole world is just down on you and looking at you and has heard all of the lies and the rumors and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, man, you just don't want to do nothing but cover your head and hide. Um, so those are just a few examples in relationship to <laughs> you going, a few examples, for God's sake, what is this? Um, but there's also, and what I would consider worse, is the other category. And that is the failure. The failure. Where you, it's just too much for you. Uh, and you just quit. Or you, you, know, you do rail back after a while, after holding steady for a while. But then you just can't take it anymore. Or, and uh, you end up failing Jesus, like Peter did. You end up failing the Father in not giving him his son, the lamb, his firstborn. Um, you end up, uh, and I wrote down, you fear or you hate. You fear failing or you hate failing Jesus. And uh, letting your fears cause you to protect self while letting Jesus die. Now, that's what Peter did when, when they took Jesus away in the garden. And Peter followed afar off. But when he got clumped in with that, he choose, chose to self-protect. And in so doing, he just let Jesus die there. You know. Um, and uh, then also the, the failure having to live with your inability to let the lamb live in you. And I'm telling you, those, those, that, that listing under the failure, not, not just the, the uh, struggle. The struggle seems terrible enough, but to f stop. And we probably all will do that, you know, till we, till we get this and understand what the real issues are, the eternal issues that are in this, um, it's, it's just so hard, failing Jesus. So, you s literally, um, you know, becoming an evildoer, literally, or literally um, doing, all of a sudden just breaking out and doing everything you can to s prove them wrong or to show them in a bad light or to to self-protect and to justify everything and whatever. And you see, the, the, the problem with that is in the sufferings of Christ, there is no justification. You're not, suppo there's, you're not supposed to be justified. God's not trying to justify you. God was not trying to justify Jesus in that. Jesus was innocent. Jesus was not guilty. J they lied. The, those aren't justifications in the sufferings of Christ to, to, to mention all of that. There's no justification when you get into this, the sufferings of Christ. There's not meant to be any justification. And if you can find some and then start using them, you've already messed up then. You, you, you haven't just struggled with it. Once you start using them, you've failed the lamb and you failed uh, the father in getting his son, and you're just flailing, trying to look better. And, and let me just say this. You know, if you seek to save, you lose, particularly in this situation. If you seek to save, you're, all, you, you, you've, you're already off track, you know. Um, this is the one area that you shouldn't ever even I mean, you, we will, and you will, and I have, but you shouldn't ever go there thinking, uh, well, you know, I'll prove them wrong, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
that's you know I don't I don't even know how to describe how bad that is that you would become an evil doer when you're supposed to be with Jesus and doing that same thing back only maybe worse some people worse than the evil doer that started it or evil doers so um, uh, having to live with your inability to let the lamb live in you. And that's, that's something you have to live with every day, every month, every year, the rest of your Christian life. Having to live with the inability of, uh, to, to let the lamb live in you in those situations. Um, and that's fellowship of his sufferings, the fellowship of his sufferings that, that Paul talks about. Well, that one is right. That one is equal to what Peter's talking about. The fellowship of his sufferings is to be with him in the spirit in which he did it. He, see, Jesus didn't go through all of that and take the stripes and take the lies and take the slaps, the insults, the all of this stuff. He didn't take all of that so that when we, quote unquote, get to heaven, we'll all sit around the throne and he'll say, you know, it wasn't right what they did to me. You know, I want to tell you, a lot of people don't know this. You hear Jesus saying this. A lot of people don't, the lamb on the throne, slaughtered lamb. A lot of people don't know this. But that one, that one uh, guy that slapped me, you, you know what his life was like and everything? You know, he's not going to sit there and go through that. He didn't, when he rose from the dead, he didn't look them all up and, and, and say, see, you're, you're wrong. He didn't do all that. He's not going to do all that because this area, there is, we, we should be free of having to be right and look good and, you know, have everybody still like us. You, you, want, you want the Father to like you. You want Jesus to like you. And you mean it. And that's what it's about, being with him in that. All right. So, um, uh, so really, a lot of what I'm talking about here is when you get into the red zone, because that's where the trial is. That's where, you know, you, uh, you are struggling. See, up here, when you first enter into it, you're not sure exactly how everything's going to go or whatever. But when you get in the red zone, um, it's red alert. You're going to get in there and you're going to see, you're going to see the Lord. You're going to see that this is what it really is about. Um, but you're going to see the viciousness of the attackers and, and of the lies and of the links that human nature would go to tear down someone else. These are not bad things to see because most of us live in fairy tale land. Anyway, so you get in there, and then in there, that's where you really settle it. That's like this box could be cut in half. Of the first half of the red is really, really, you know, you're not sure what direction you're going to go. But before you leave that, you settle it, uh, and that's, that's your first step into the last part, which is the third box. And so um what we call part three and uh in in part three there is a couple there's several things that are really important that are um identifiers that you are actually have made it to part three okay <laughs> You've made it to the gold standard down here. And it's funny because Peter uses that word gold and silver. He uses that gold uh, several times in relationship to this reality. Because that's what it is. He sees that as, as if you are with the, the lamb in this spirit uh, and you go with him in that, then by the time you reach there, this is the gold standard. This is the eternal gold standard to God. This is everything to Him. All right. So, uh, if you enter 
uh, part three, it means you have already passed through discerning what this is all about, right? But by the time you get down here, you put, you either know it or you're not there. <laughs> okay, that's so you've 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 gone through all this stuff and it was a jumble, but now you have discerned what this is all about. Okay. Number two, you have settled it in your heart to be with Jesus in this. And it's it's done now. Once you step into this, it's done. If you get that far, it's done, okay? Um, and uh, number three, you've suffered and or failed, but gotten back up. If you're here in the goal park, you got back up. It doesn't, and you know, here's the cool thing. It doesn't matter what happens in the red box or the blue box if you have stumbled your way through but finally get it right and you enter into the the, the goal then you've entered into the third phase of this then um it's you've settled it in your heart about jesus and you have failed maybe and how did i write it uh, you've you've suffered and or failed but you've gotten back up and you're going to be with him. You're going to be with him. And it's just settled in you. And all of the other things, you know, are, are, are removed. Um, I wrote number four, resolve that the Father's glory and the Son's glory are what you want. Okay. So remember now, in truth, um, when you get ready to enter into this thing, the two big things that, the, that, that Peter writes about is that there would be, a, I'll put it in these words, future glory. Future glory. Well, the future is now when you get to the, this third stage. Um, you entered this so that it wouldn't be your future glory. It would be that the Father got the Son and is glorified by His Son in you, and you're with Him in that all uh, up to this point and, and steady in it. And the same thing with Jesus being glorified, that you glorified Him by being with Him in these things, in His sufferings. And, um, I mean, you think about it, you know, that... Uh, Paul talked about, you know, oh, that I may know him. He didn't say, oh, I want to know his miracles, or oh, I want to know, you know, what the future is going to be with, with him, or oh, I want to know what heaven's going to be like, or any of that kind of stupid stuff. It was to know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to his death. That's, that's the area he wanted to know the Lord. Well, the fellowship of his sufferings is a real thing. All right. And then uh, also that you've come to that certain peace, joy, and contentment that comes from that place in here, in this third stage. You, you can read it in Peter. Sometimes it's a little scary because the way he describes it, it is so that you're, you know, uh, so happy. You're so full of joy. And and the and the it says and the glory rests on you. When you read those scriptures, it's and that's one of the things that would be fun to do, and I hope I remember to do it. But to to take different scriptures and read it to you, and then see if you can define decide which box that would probably be be the most preeminent thing in. And it should be once once we catch hold of this, it should be fairly easy to do. Okay, and then uh, number six, that you can bless your enemies while gladly bearing their burdens. All right, so that's there's more there than just what I said. Um, I I have and I've known people that can sort of try to make their way through this, but when they get down to the end, it's not the gold standard. They they still hold. Um, uh, they still have regrets, uh, but they still hold things against people. They still, uh, there is no glory that rests on them. There is no joy 
of being with Jesus or bearing that for them. Um, there's, there is, uh, they're glad the trial's over, but they never forget what old so-and-so did to them. Um, and they hold it like a, like a little tiny monster inside of them, but they pet it. It's their pet. It's their pet monster, you know. And uh, they, 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 they cuddle it and everything. Well, they shouldn't have been so mean to us, you know, or all this kind of stuff. I'm sorry. You don't understand the sufferings of Christ or Peter's writings at all then, if that's where you go with that. I mean, that's, that's really, really, really missing the mark of, of this area. No, uh, like I said, uh, you can bless your enemies while gladly bearing their burden. Um, one of the things that we will see, we will get into, is there are certain places in First Peter that show that actually the evildoers uh, can be turned. Now, there are also places in there that they, they don't. Like Jesus, I mean, I don't know that Pontius Pilate or the, you know, uh, uh, any any of the people that had a hand in Jesus's trial and crucifixion repented and or or and more than repented saw the Lord in it. But Peter at least lets us know that that's a that's that's a possibility, that's a possibility, and he also lets us know that well, there's a chance they won't. All right, so our goal can't be, well, I'm doing this for them. You do this for Jesus, and you do this for the Father. It cannot be, I'm doing it to get them saved. That's an automatic. If you do your part right, there's a better chance for them. If you don't, there's a really good chance they're not going to change at all. So you better just make sure your focus is with the Lord. You know, we preach not ourselves. Christ Jesus, the Lord, ourselves, your servants, for Christ's sake. I'm just, I'm doing this for Christ's sake. I'm doing this for his sake, not even mine. And, and you know, you don't, I don't know. I mean, there, there are beauties that you get out of it that, um, that you can't describe. Beauty, the beauty of knowing that you were with the Lord and you did carry His Spirit and you did, um, you did hold that a higher honor. I mean, you know, uh, you just, in Hebrews, there's several different examples of it. There is, you know, Moses, you know, considering the riches of Egypt to be not worthy to be compared, you know, with, with the, that glory. And that's scripture there in 2 Corinthians 4, the end of the chapter. Um, just, there's just something beyond words where you, you do sense that the spirit of glory rests on you, but it's, the, it's not like, oh, I'm glorified because I did so good. It's the sense of the good pleasure of the Father and the good pleasure of the Son. And that um, it's almost like, it, it, I'm going to just describe it like this, not that this is the way Peter describes it at all. But it's almost like Jesus is in you, and but you're with Jesus in that also. And you go through that. And in the end, when you get down here to this third phase, that... Um, you have been with the Lord in that, and it's, again, this is dumb, this is just a dumb example, but it's like Jesus comes out of you and goes over and runs into the arms of the Father, and the Father grabs the Son, and there's just joy between them, and part of the joy that they have is there's one that was with us. There's one that understands us. There's one that doesn't have to be, um, you know, justified or, or delivered or, or see their enemies slaughtered or any of that stuff. There's, there's, we, we just, we, just, we got one. <laughs> but they're hugging one another. 
instead of you. You're kind of over there going, wow, this is, this is really good for them or something. Again, I, don't, I can't describe it, but I'm telling you that there, that was a, what I was trying to say with you come to a certain peace, joy, and contentment that comes from being in that place, that right place. So, um, I think I'm going to stop right there.